and the sun comes up in the morning. Good morning. There's a, there's a fire that there's a young girl that was sleeping in a tent there. She's not there anymore. It is freezing out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the, my hands are freezing. Good morning. Today is the day of the Lord. I'm going to do my morning street ministry, but we're going to talk about uh, King Manasseh today. King Manasseh, he comes from a Christian home. His father was King Hezekiah. Interesting enough, here's, uh, this is Samuel. I'm going to show you Samuel. He's still sleeping, so be quiet. Oh, he's not. Hey, how you doing, Samuel? <laughs> oh, you got a new tent. My wife actually got it from them. Two girlfriends are hers. They're both NATO. Can I show them the tent? Sure, why not? Here, let's see. Yeah, it's a beauty. <laughs> and, uh, look at this. I'll show you. One second, eh? One, one second, eh? Check this out. It's freezing out. It's actually ice cold here in Canada. This is the 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 the, the, the white the white gold, eh? How you doing, brother John? Here, welcome to my channel. Remember, support your local teen challenge, food bank, and women's shelter. It is way too bright here. So, good morning. Had a great day today so far. And I'm halfway through my straight ministry to my channel, Brother John. Say hola espanol. Si quieres, hablo mi espanol. Estoy trabajando con los chavos de la calle. Si tienen vicios. I speak Spanish. I graduated my Bible college in Mexico. It's less, uh, this is, uh, how you doing? <laughs> All right, so if you know somebody trapped in addiction, I'm going to give you some hope from the Bible. The Old Testament was written down for those whom the ends of the earth has come. We're going to look at uh, some kings in the Bible. We're going to look at the prayers of a man named Hezekiah. <laughs> so if you're a new Christian, we have the first king of Israel was King Saul. And we had King David, King Solomon. And then we had King Jeroboam. He was the king. The ten tribes went north and two tribes went south. That's uh, Benjamin and Ju Judah. Anyways, um, we have Baal worship. We have uh, Jezebel and Ahab. And then we have Jehu, he's the 10th king. Then it comes all the way to the 13th king. This is King Hezekiah, he was a great king, served the Lord, loved the Lord. And um, his son, he prayed for, I believe he prayed for his son every day. Now his son was named Manasseh, and that's the king we're going to be talking about. I believe he was 13 or 14 years old, maybe he was 12. He actually reigned as king of Israel for 55 years. Now Manasseh, when he came, became king, yeah, he came from a good godly family, but he absolutely rejected the Lord. Got into horrible Satan worship. In fact, the Bible says that from one end to the other, there was blood filled the streets by Manasseh's murderous, torturous death and Satan worshiping inside the temple of God. He set up idols, right? He sacrificed his own children. God looked down on this world, saw Manasseh. He's like, oh boy, yeah. He's done. He's finished. <laughs> so he sent the Assyrian army to go in and capture Manasseh. Now the Assyrians, okay, so Assyrians, now the capital of Assyria, here's some Bible trivia, comment below if you know. What's the capital of Assyria? Nineveh. <laughs> Nineveh, that's where we get Jonah and the fish. Jonah went to preach repentance in Nineveh. So the Assyrians went in, captured Manasseh. They put a hook in his nose. <laughs> And they held him. They put it. They carted him off. Put him in prison. Now we're going to get to how this encourages us in a second, because when Manasseh was in prison, just think about it. He's in prison. Here he is. He's faced with all the sin in his life. He led the whole entire nation of Israel into sin. It's in the Bible, actually, it's like like today's standard. How much? You know, I come across it quite often. People say that they have sinned too much. God can't forgive me. You know, a lot of people can't forgive themselves. Anyways, Manasseh's in prison. He led the whole entire nation of Israel into Satan worship. All right? Hook in the nose, thrown in prison. He got back on his knees. Praise the Lord. Called out, Father, forgive me. Forgive me, Father, for my sins. And guess what? The Father heard his cries and forgave him. Not only that, he rescued him out of the prison, gave him back his whole kingship. You know? 
So the point of this is that the point of this video is the prodigals. I come across people all the time. If you have a son or a daughter, brother or sister or aunt or uncle that's in addiction, those prayers will be answered. God answers prayer. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I, I reflect on, I think about, you know, Hezekiah was praying for Manasseh. Remember, Hezekiah was that good king. And he's praying for his son, Manasseh. Just the, and God looks at Manasseh, 12 years old. He loved Manasseh. No, that is honoring the prayers of Hezekiah. See, God will answer your prayers if you have somebody trapped in addiction, but it's always God's timing. Now, I've, I'm reflecting on it this morning. When did God really love Manasseh? Was it when he was a little kid or when he was in repentance? I believe that God sent the Assyrians in to destroy, capture him, because he loved Manasseh. He wanted Manasseh to serve him. God it says in the Bible that God is a jealous God, and he jealously loves your family member that's caught in addiction. Especially, you know, particularly people that were come from Christian homes. Now, all those prayers, God will answer those prayers. People that aren't living for God and think they can do it all on their own, all of a sudden an absolute catastrophe comes. Yeah, they get back on their knees when the fridge is empty. When there's no food in the fridge, you get laid off at work, you get a sickness, you're on your knees. Father, help me. I'm in crisis. You know, and God looks down this world. He says, yeah, I forgive you. I love you. I'll clean you up. I'll set you on a new path. You'll have a life and life more abundantly and an eternal reward. The trick of Satan is that we think that living in sin, lusting with our eyes in front of the computer every night, lying at work, right? stealing, covetous, you know, all the things that Satan tempts us with in our lives, that's the lie of the enemy. That somehow we're missing out on something as Christians. Living an abundant life, being God's hands and feet here on earth, is a life and life more abundantly with an eternal reward for the children that walk in obedience to the Father. I pray the Lord bless you. I'm off to my finish my morning ministry. It's an interesting story of Manasseh. And I was reflecting on it, you know, that Hezekiah. <laughs> I can't wait to meet Manasseh. He's one of my heroes of the Bible because I was a backslider. I might as well finish with that. You know, let me see here. I'm in my fifth year clean and sober. I was a Bible college graduate. I graduated my Bible college. But I let sin into my life. That's a fact. I let sin in my life, just a little bit here, a little bit there. What led me is a total disaster of my life. I, once again, was on the street. I was in the back alley. If you can watch my testimony I'm on my website, you know, I come from the gangs and the violence and the drug addiction. So five years ago, I literally had a needle hanging out of my arm, and I was eating out of the dumpster, just like that one. <laughs> and I came to my, you know, obviously that's why I relate to Manasseh or the prodigals or the people I minister today is that I was absolutely at my wits end, homeless, I had sores on my face, drug addicted, you know, one step away from going back to prison, which I spent lots of time in prison, and I got back on my knees. Father, if you can forgive me, I now repent. Guess what happened? It took me actually quite a while for me to feel forgiven, but I finally now, I have found peace. And that's where with your loved one, you know, if you have a son or a daughter, aunt or an uncle, brother or nephew that's living in addiction, living on the street, or, or have walked away from God, you know, there's always hope in Christ Jesus to forgiveness, and the disaster comes to us all. So be building your faith on the rock. All right, I'm done with this video. It's interesting a little bit. And uh, look at this. I'll show you. One second, eh? One, one second, eh? Check this out. This is... <laughs> It's freezing out. It's actually ice cold here in Canada. And this is the 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 the, the white the white gold. Eh? <laughs> I pray the Lord bless you. I might as well finish with the scripture. Let me think here. How about this? We'll go to Matthew sixteen twenty four. Jesus said, "Anyone come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but if you live your life for my sake, you will find it." What would it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can man give in exchange for his soul? The Son of Man will come in his Father's glory. Does it say with his angels with him? I haven't quoted this in a while. And then reward each person according to what he has done. I pray the Lord bless you, keep you strong in the faith, and always remember. Brother John loves you. Bye. Okay, now i got to turn this thing off. i got to take my hands off. It's freezing cold out here. Bye. Love you.